tracking and acting upon dates inside of SQL is kind of a big thing. A lot of the queries that you're going to be executing will be things like, well, I want all orders for a particular year, or I want to go get the uh, end of the month maybe for billing purposes, and things like that. And so you'll notice there's a lot of different date functions that are built in. The couple of basic ones right away are get date and get UTC date, where get date will get me the current server date, while get UTC date will get me again the current server date, but it will convert that to universal time or sometimes known as Zulu time. Date part, on the other hand, will return back the part of a date. Now it's directly related to day, month, year, and personally that's what I find myself using. I think that reads a little bit better, but the nice part about date part is that we can pass in a parameter and potentially make this more dynamic. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to go get the last time that somebody ordered a, from uh, the AdventureWorks catalog, and I just wanted to get the year in which they did that. So what I could do is something like this. So I'm going to open up a brand new query window, and we'll start off with sort of our select year. And again, I want to get the most recent order date. So that's going to be max of order date. And let's go ahead and make sure that we uh, specify the table we're getting that from as most recent order year. And then we'll go ahead and do the uh, exact same thing with uh, date part. And so we've got year and then again, the max SOH uh, order date just as before. And we'll say as most recent order year. Now that one's gonna be done with date part. So let's go ahead and give that date part as the name. And then up top, uh, let's just say year uh, function. And then that way we can kind of denote the fact uh, that we're calling the different uh, functions. We'll say C last name from, and then we'll have to join our two tables together. And that's going to be sales, sales order header. Again, we'll alias that as uh, SOH, interjoin. Oh, let's clean up. Uh, there we go. And so now we'll say interjoin person contact uh, as E on SOH. My contact ID equals C contact ID. And then I'm going to throw in a little uh, group by last name here. And what you're going to notice is sure enough, we get the 2004 on both columns there because that was what we called. In fact, we can sort of show the, uh, the year just so you can see the work a little bit. So we'll say the max uh, SOH order date as most recent order date. And now you can actually see the uh, recent order date that we've got there. So you can see the fact that we just got 2004 and we could do that again the exact same way. There is no difference between calling either function there. The biggest thing again about date part is that functionality that we can pass in the part that we want. We also have the ability to modify dates as well where date diff will give us the difference between two dates. Date add will give us the ability to add time to a date and then is date would give us the ability to determine whether or not a value is a date. So for example, with date diff, what I could do is I could get a report on when the last time was that somebody placed an order, how long ago that happened to be. So what I'm going to start with is the management studio. And I'm actually just going to make my life a little bit easier here. I'm just going to copy the bottom part of that query because that's going to be the base for the next query. Since we've got our last name, our, our sales order header, our contact, we've got everything we need. So we'll just go ahead and grab that. So I'm just going to do a real quick copy, open up a new query window, and let's just go ahead and paste that. I'm going to click right up top here, and let's say select. And then what we're going to want is we're going to want the date diff. So I'm going to say date diff. It wants to know the interval, which in our case is going to be the, uh, the day. It wants to know the uh, starting time. And so that'll again, just be the max SOH order date. And it's gonna want the end time, which is gonna be today. So we'll say get date. And then we'll say as days since last order. And let's go ahead and execute that. 
And you'll notice, sure enough, now we get the total number of days since the last order. Brand new to SQL 2012 is a whole series of different date time functions. Date from parts and time from parts will both take three parameters that will build a date based on the year, day, and month provided, or a time object based on the hour, minute, and second provided. The EO month is a little function that can be quite helpful because what that will do is that will give you the last day of the current month. So if you're building some form of a billing system, needed to know when the last day of the month is, EO month, done. And then last but not least is the parse function. And the parse function will convert a string to a date. Now we'll talk a bit more about convert functions later on, but I wanted to call out parse here because the goal of parse is for dates or for numeric data types. But let's take a look at that EO month. I really like this one. Fire up a new query window, and let's just get the last day of this month. So we'll say, select EO month and simply get date. And sure enough, you'll notice that it's going to tell us that the last day of this month is the 30th. Well, specifically, September 30th of 2012.